About a week or so back, a film called Strange Darling came out, and unfortunately my ticket was full with other movies to see, so I was unable to get out for this one. But after hearing the overwhelming amount of praise for this, even from my community, I thought, Adam, you gotta get out. I, I said that to myself. I said, Adam, hey, buddy, you gotta see the movie. And so I did. And so now I'm going to talk about it in a spoiler-free review. I know it's been out for a little while, but I still think this is kind of a fresher film that not a lot of people know about. It's a little bit more indie. I want people to see this movie without anything being ruined. So, fear not, I'm not going to give anything away. It's going to be a quicker review, I think. But please join me. We're going to talk about Strange Darling. <laughs> Written and directed by J.T. Molnar. I've never heard of this guy. I apologize a thousand times if I said the name wrong. Uh, but this is a stunning looking film shot on 35mm. It's tough to top a classic. The 35mm is a beautiful looking film. I hate the digital shit that's going on, especially with streaming services. I don't care if it's in 8K. It doesn't look good. And so 35 millimeter, that old school cinematic quality is up front and center all over Strange Darling. And not just the visual look of the film, but the way it's shot is just so interesting. It has such an old school vibe, almost grindhousey in a way. And it gets just as crazy at points. Before I go any further, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, I post movie reviews every week on the channel, along with a bunch of other movie related stuff. Would love to have you stick around. Willa Fitzgerald is the main actress here. She plays the lady. We, we get nothing more than that. This is a pretty vague film for the most part. Things will unfold as it moves along. But uh, yeah, she is a powerhouse in this flick. I am only familiar with her in the fall of the House of Usher or whatever the name of that thing was. That was a great show. It was a, it was a mini series, fantastic. And she was good in that as well. But here, all the stops are pulled. She's putting in a performance. And if this was a bigger movie, I have no doubt she could be up for some awards. She won't because this is going to be a lower key affair, but still. But she does deserve it. This is pretty much a two-person affair. Others will come along, like Ed Begley Jr.'s randomly in the movie, which I love Ed Begley Jr. It's funny seeing him in this. But Kyle Gallner is the other actor. He's previously worked on Scream. He was in Smile, which I also really liked, even if it was kind of a copy of It Follows. Still a fun time at the movies. Here, though, we're doing something different, folks. And we're doing it with good speed. The movie is only an hour and 30-some minutes long. It is broken down into six chapters, which I have bitched about in the past. I think the whole chapter gimmick is really lame and oftentimes brings nothing to the story. Napoleon used them. A, a whole bunch of movies in the last three or four years have decided, let's put chapters in for no reason at all. But in the case of Strange Darling, it's part of the film. It absolutely makes sense narratively. And it's also presented in a non-linear fashion. We're not starting with chapter one. We're starting down the line and we're gonna work our way around until this whole thing starts to come together. And every time a new chapter opens, something else is revealed that makes you go, oh, now my emotions have completely shifted. The film constantly keeps you on your toes. It really does keep you on the edge of your seat. Because of some of the crazy shit that's taking place, and it's 100% engaging. All that said, you could also really hate this movie. <laughs> it's, it's not a one size fits all. This is definitely one of those movies that's experimenting. It's playing with things. It does have a few long takes that I would argue are a bit pretentious. It has characters with some definite character flaws. So it's hard to sometimes be on board with what's going on. But it absolutely worked for me in a way that Long Legs and Barbarian did not. Those movies got praised up and down. I did not like either of them. This could have very well been another one on its way to pissing me off, but I thought it worked wonderfully. A week or so back, I talked about Cuckoo. Really enjoyed that as well. Because from a narrative standpoint, these films do make sense. They do line up. It's not so wishy-washy bullshitty that I can't really even get invested in the story because it's not going anywhere. And it's a movie that I think would be even more exciting to watch on repeat viewings. It has very careful, competent direction. I never thought for a second there was a shot in this movie or a camera placement or whatnot that wasn't done to service the story. But it was just trying to be another A24 type film. This isn't A24 to my knowledge. I think it's Miramax or something random. But when I look back at Long Legs with its Polaroid introduction, 
what what was the point of it? What are you trying to convey to me? It just felt like it was artsy for the sake of doing it. So that moviegoers will go, oh, this is genius filmmaking. This is art here. I'm watching something really special. I call bullshit. But in the case of Strange Darling, it does seem sincere. It seems like this director knew exactly the story he wanted to tell and how he wanted to present it. And it fired on every single front for me. This isn't some Blumhouse bullshit. It's rated R. There is violence. There is blood. There is some pretty intense moments. There's a good amount of swearing. There's a good amount of high anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe don't take the girlfriend or boyfriend out to this one if it's a first date. This is something you go with your buddies to really appreciate what's unfolding. And again, it might not hit for you at all, but the good news is, if you're a movie fan, like I think you probably are if you're watching this video, you owe it to yourself to at least give it a chance. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I went out a week after, gave it a watch, people were praising it. Sometimes that's scary to me. Sometimes I think, oh God, it's going to be another one of these... You know, Barbarian's the best thing ever, it's brilliant, and then I watch it, very high expectations, and I'm completely let down. And it's only because it doesn't check off the boxes I look for, at least not all of them, in a good movie. Strange Darling did. Music, visuals, cast, story, it all worked. Give it a shot, I'm gonna leave it there. Hopefully that was vague enough. I didn't wanna give anything away as far as the story's concerned because it's a ride. It's a ride you should experience as fresh as you can. Let me know if you saw this one already and shout out to those that commented below telling me to check this one out. I appreciate you, I'm glad you let me know. I would also appreciate if you subscribe to the channel if you didn't already. I post movie content every week, would love to have you like the video, maybe think about joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. It's the best way to show support to me and the channel. Leave a couple bucks a month, get a bunch of free videos. It's a good deal. If you really like what I'm doing, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants. A lot more comedic. I'm bitching about first world problems, hoping to get a laugh out of you. And hopefully, I see you around. Take care.